You ready? Yes, I'm ready. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Sarah Khan was born in Birmingham, England in 1984 and raised in Lahore, Pakistan. She holds a BFA with honors from National Collage of Arts, Lahore. She was selected for the BAG Art Camp, an international art residency in Bergen, Norway. She was also selected by the Vancouver Mural Festival in 2018. Her works have been featured in several national and international group exhibitions. In addition to her first solo show, Suraj Kanar, in Canada at the Surrey Art Gallery in 2019. She has had recent group shows including Terrestrial Beings, Esplanade Arts and Heritage Centre, Medicine Hat Canada in 2019, and What is Seen and Not Seen, With or Without Seeing, Gandahara Art Space, Karachi, Pakistan. Her work has also been featured in a book, A Big Important Artist, A Womb Manual by Danielle mm -hmm. Kreiser. So Sarah, um, I love you to describe your artwork to me um, and, and maybe um, talk about it in a more personal way in the, the way that you approach your work um, from a personal perspective in the studio on an everyday basis and then how you might describe it in a wider context uh, like within the world. So um, how they usually come about, the larger paintings, uh, is that I do a lot of studies and drawings. Um, and... Uh, what I enjoy doing is doing, uh, when I'm making the studies, I make sure that I'm using lots of different mediums. Uh, so some of them will be in collage, some of them will be in watercolor, some of them will be uh, pencil, paper and pencil. Um, and they're done very, very quickly. There's not too much detail. Whatever thought I'm, uh, whatever thought is swimming in my head or whatever th things I'm obsessing over at the moment, um, I usually uh, start thinking of them more constructively, why I'm thinking about them, why mm. they're swimming in my head. You reflect on them. I reflect on them. And then uh, sometimes they'll uh, sort of uh, take another um, branch uh, because of the books I'm reading. They'll get sort of uh, mixed in quotes from books and stuff. Uh, discussions I'm having with my friends and my husband or my family. So everything sort of and then I start making notes as well, but the studies themselves are all drawings. So whatever mm -hmm. uh, thoughts I have, there won't be literal representations of the thoughts, but whatever uh, comes to my head um, while I'm thinking of all of this, I, I jot it down, whether it's in paint or pencil or whatever. Mm -hmm. And then uh, I put them together um, and use them as references for the larger. So they'll I'll spread them out on the floor in front of me to see how the composition should work mm -hmm. um, and use those um, as a reference for the larger paintings. Why I love doing that is because that gives me a chance to sort of manipulate the watercolor um, into, into the way the different mediums look. So the collage is very hard edges and very almost sometimes very flat. A lot of this stuff is very flat and cut out. So I love using watercolor watercolor to depict those those areas so, so when you say collage though um like are you actually making collages yes yes be, be, as studies yes ah yeah so okay. i'll do lots of collage work i'll even do um pen and ink um or and then you cut cut these out make cut the these out, make collages so i'll take a maybe like a week or two or a couple of weeks where i'll just be doing these and it's mm -hmm. it's i feel like a mad scientist because i'm just you know um have lots of different things going on and they're very quick so they're fun that way and um drawing from life as well like i'll mm -hmm. go to bake basic inquiry and quickly take a, do a few uh, sketches uh, mm -hmm. there and then they all come together to 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 make uh to sort of tell the story that i'm like thinking about absolutely. so when you are doing all these things you you you've you've already kind of done that initial work where you've uh, been thinking about what kind of story you want to tell yes. what the yes. narrative will be and yes. then you start to like figure out how you're going to tell that how i'm going to tell that how i'm going to weave that together ah nice and uh, so there's first there's the notes with uh, the note writing and the thinking is just happening all the time um and when i realize what i'm um, most interested in, then I start planning the specific stories um, and weaving, it, weaving them together. Mm -hmm. um, 
I don't know. I've never done quilting, but to me, it feels a bit like that, where mm. I'm sort of patching things together to mm. form a larger, larger picture. And I love manipulating watercolor to do different things. Um, mm. Mostly uh, what I'd seen growing up was a lot of florals and still lives done in watercolors or quick studies by um, painters done in watercolors. I love doing, I love using watercolor for the finished piece, firstly. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And I love that it, it doesn't have to do like these pretty floral pictures. I, even my work initially probably looks like pretty floral pictures, mm -hmm. but I love that when you go, when you take a deeper look, there's a lot of weird, sometimes even dark stuff happening. Mm -hmm. So I love pulling it, pulling people in with those pretty floral pictures. Mm -hmm. You know, you I think one of the things that um, I really respond to in your work is just that, is that, um, you know, life is not, like we, I think we do, we spend so much energy trying to put forward faces that are, um, you know, kind of together and not, not dealing with how wild life is yes. and how chaotic it can be. Um, so you have this like, yeah, we're, I'm sane and everything's cool. And, you know, and what I love about your work and I think is really important about it is that, um, there's these it, there's like these beautiful colors there's beautiful imagery but then there's there is like the, the chaos is there right the dragons exactly. are there yes and and exactly. and i'm like yeah right like the I skeletons get that. are there like yeah. we all have those skeletons in our closet and we need to deal with them and i think yeah. um uh, I think that's the fun of life as well. Otherwise, it'd be boring. Yeah, everyone would be perfect. And that's, yeah, <clears throat> yeah, and that is totally boring. And for some reason, we we continue to think that that's the way to move forward. Yeah, putting up a face, and then yeah, I, I feel like vulnerabilities and um, sort of insecurities. I, I remember somebody saying. Uh, I love how casually you mention your insecurities. I think it's so important because once I put them out there or I reflect on it, that's when I know they're there and that's when I do something about them yeah, as well. You've made it be <clears throat> you've made something that could be unconscious conscious. Yes, exactly. The things that make us uncomfortable, I think it's really important to sort of um uh investigate them, cut them open to see why. Yeah, and that's what, what I see it. happening in your work. My paintings are a constant dialogue dialogue between me and the painting, sort of um, you know, I'm, I'm trying to, so it starts with a thought that it's does swimming around in my head, but then the more I go into the painting, the more I, um, the more detailed and the more it goes to its, towards its end, uh, the more I know about myself. So it's sort of like, a, you know, a discussion. discovery, a, dis a discovery, a discussion, mm -hmm. um, you know, and, and <clears throat> great art, tends to be able to illuminate or illustrate um, something about being human. So I, I, think the, I think that your work is like that. I think your work is at that level. It is, yeah, it's really, like I know, I'm not trying to blow wind up your skirt here. <laughs> <laughs> I do, I do, I'm like totally, you know. I love it. <clears throat> your work is visually very layered and seems to be built up with a great deal of forethought what kind of skills do you use to start to do those layers? So, so for me, um, I, the, if I did a very detailed drawing on my uh, larger surface where I'm doing my final piece, mm -hmm. if I did a very specific drawing with everything there, I'd get very bored. Just looking at the drawing, I wouldn't know what, I wouldn't want to go further with it. Because it needs to be like a dialogue where I sort of, there's a little bit of play and then there's a little bit of... Um, uh, uh, specificity to the, uh, the like so, there are certain things I'll be very uh, playful with certain parts of the painting and uh, rely on the painting to sort of tell me what I want to do next with it and then there are certain things that I'm very specific about that I need them to be a certain way um, it has to be a mix if uh, if it was all planned out I when it's all planned out I get bored like even mm -hmm. when you paint from a photograph, you paint from a photograph start to end, it's, it gets so boring. Mm -hmm. uh, so for me, um, I'll mark certain parts of the painting because with watercolor, it's really difficult to go back. You can't erase things. You can't go over them. You can change them. So, mm -hmm. so that happens when I'm playing. Sometimes I'll, um, I'll have something very specific in mind. I put it down, but I've decided this isn't working. Then I'll change it and change that particular thing into something else mm -hmm. uh, with layering. 
Um, but mostly um, I'll mark the paper with where I want certain things to be looking at my studies. And then I'll sort of, it's a sort of to and fro, a tug of, tug of war sort of, you know, where I'm just going in with a plan and then taking things back and then going further with it. And so when you, when you say you're playing um, and you're going to let the painting speak to you, are you talking about like the fact that the fluidity in the water will kind of go some places and then it'll dry in a certain way? Yes. That's what you're talking yes. about, right? Yes. yes. So yes. like, get, tell me the practicals there. <clears throat> yes. Yes. So, so uh, firstly, the, with watercolor, you don't know how it's going to sit. So, mm -hmm. you know, you put like a, a, a layer of a very light watery blue paint and then you put a splot of say turquoise in there or um, some other color in there. You don't know how it's going to sit. Mm -hmm. So you wait for that surface to dry and then that'll tell you how you want, for, for example, I use a lot of foliage, how you want the foliage to go over it. Do you mm -hmm. want to, do you want to uh, paint the, uh, the stems and the leaves on it or do you want those to be the negative space? And do you mm -hmm. want to, do you want to add a darker color around that negative space? Mm -hmm. So there's a lot of that. Uh, you, you, in your paintings too, you have, um, you have like, these the, you use negative space so beautifully like that's, I love it I love how it's kind of like quite dense and there's just so much happening in these certain areas and then there's these just like um you know like they're like these dense areas will often be surrounded by negative space negative space yeah, yeah. so so great but do you just go okay I'm gonna have this piece be negative space and then you just um work around it yes work around so, it. yeah so, so so when i mark it out a lot mm -hmm. of the times i'll decide okay this area i need to sort of leave it, it needs to be um to balance like, the painting us to, to give the viewer breathing space and mm -hmm. a lot of the times a narrative um uh, sort of um makes that decision for me as well you know there's there's like mm -hmm. a for example a plant right in the middle of the painting that doesn't have um that's completely white Mm -hmm. uh, the, there's one behind you actually yes <laughs> yes <there is>. exactly <laughs> yeah. that yeah. portion needs to be uh White. blank uh whatever thoughts gone behind it the narrative has sort of told me okay this piece needs to be white because this plant is not meant to be here it's just uh this person's imagination or something you know yeah. this, this yeah. particular character or figure in the painting thinks mm -hmm. this plant is here but it's actually not so stuff like that um, mm -hmm. because I'm telling these stories to myself in my head, so stuff like that also that, uh, mm -hmm. dictates where things go. But yeah, when I decide this portion needs to be, or this area of the painting needs to be negative space, then I work around it because negative space can be covered if you decide later that it's not working. But mm -hmm. once you've covered it, there's no going back. Yeah. So there, those limitations really excite me. That's why your, your paintings are incredible. Cause you're just like, holy, like how, so she must have planned this <laughs> and then, forever. And then working around those negative spaces is so much fun. You know, like you make a little ladder. One of my paintings has this tiny ladder and you just have to go really, really deep into it. And I think I'm losing my eyesight slowly because I keep going deeper and deeper. Oh, yeah. And it's, it's really, it's uh, the challenge is exciting for me. For there is a, a technical skill that is employed in your work. I'm just reading my questions here, but there's technical <laughs> skill that is employed in your work that is used to tell stories. Um, are you trying to tell stories with your paintings or capture a feeling by using visual metaphors or how do you approach some of your more complicated so, works? So for me, both these things are very important. The yeah. storytelling I think is more important because that's how I process things through stories. Mm -hmm. Everything in my life that I'm going through, um, I, ha I process through painting and drawing. So I think perhaps the storytelling is more for myself um, mm -hmm. but creating that um, this um, feeling or this atmosphere to the painting um, that might be nostalgic to the rest of the world or that might take them somewhere uh, mm -hmm. they might have dreamt of, that is very important for me. Creating, a, creating an environment uh, that you almost want to touch or be inside, but you're also a little freaked out by the way uh, a lot of things are. So that's the best stuff. Like the, the words I use to describe, I wrote some down, but I was like, they're beautiful. Your paintings are, you know, your work is beautiful. There's narrative there. It's not like so specific that it's just about you. It's, it's, it does like the feminine 
experience really seems to be um, looked at a lot in your work in that the characters are women who are breastfeeding or women who are creating children or just like these <clears throat> female characters that are dropped. I think into that's story. also, that's also really important where, um, because I'm not just looking at things through my perspective. Um, I'm also having a lot of discussions with friends around me to see what their perspective on things are. So mm -hmm. they seep, seep into the paintings. Um, I want them to be, like I said, I want them to be a dis I want the paintings to be a discussion. So even mm -hmm. the things that I'm talking to myself about, about all these different uh, various aspects of our lives, I'm sort of wondering about things. I'm not putting statements down. Uh, it, it's more, you know, uh, yeah. why mm -hmm. are things the way they are? Or how did I think of this like this? And now that I'm past this phase, I'm thinking of it like this. Mm -hmm. So, so uh, ideally I want them to be about, um, about everybody, uh, about universal things uh, that were constantly sort of, the, the, about the ordinary things. I love, I love uh, thinking of it like that. You know, the ordinary things mm -hmm. that we go through in life, um, every day, tiny things every day that we go through. I feel like they're so much more important than the bigger stuff. Yeah, I think that's a very noble pursuit actually as an artist so that's Thank you. that's cool i hope um, so because we always get worried about uh the purpose of things right mm -hmm. but um uh, there are so many people who think their lives are too ordinary but that's mm -hmm. where it's at i feel yes cool right? yeah <laughs> yeah yeah i feel like i'm learning that actually so i think you're always learning that <laughs> yeah yeah you always get sucked into these um yeah Strange things the world, uh, these annoying things the world keeps trying to tell you, right? Yes. In terms of your work, what motivates you to can you continue to make art? So I realized that I sort of start going crazy if I don't. Like, I think that was the hardest thing with uh, having a baby in the beginning, having Marzia in the beginning. Um, I, because I wasn't sleeping, I was having a very hard time being in the studio. Um, I... I I was feeding her every two hours. It was very hard to sort of even stay away for that. So, so uh, I realized very quickly that is what, that would lead me to be, uh, to become unhappy. I, uh, because I process everything through painting and drawing, I have to uh, paint and draw. So I realized it's just healthy for on. you. It's healthy for me. It, it makes me look at, things from outside it makes me look at me from the outside I think mm -hmm. so I'm able to process my feelings and my emotions through that mm -hmm. um, and what's I think what your one of your talents one of your many talents is that you're able to take something that is personal and then and then a lot of other people actually can relate to it connect with it yes I think uh I think uh to assess most things uh most things we're all very like similar that way, you know? Yeah. I realized that when I moved to Canada uh, from Pakistan, um, I had been to uh, the, uh, it, it, the most West I'd gone was England and Europe. I'd never come all the way here. And uh, I'd always thought life here and people here would be very different mm -hmm. to what I'd grown up, uh, to who I'd grown up amongst. But then I made friends here and they have the same issues, you know, the, I have uh, two of my friends here who I'm really close to. Uh, we have so much in common because we're all three of us are artists. And mm -hmm. at the end of the day, that's where you find uh, commonalities, right? Mm -hmm. Where yeah. how you grew up, the kind of school, the kind of studying you did in school, the kind of games you played. And uh, it's very easy to find, uh, to, to realize how many things we have in common. I, I think that's like one of the best qualities that art can play in our lives. Like music, we yes. can enjoy it um, and it can connect us to a feeling that are, these things are complicated too. Like, like your paintings, they're complicated. A piece of music that I love that I'm just like, thank you for speaking these things that I'm yeah. finding so difficult to articulate in a word yes. um, can be expressed through mu music and art in a way. And it's, and it's really like its highest, um, I think, effective 
function in society to yes. to help us articulate these things. And exactly. so in that way, I think it's very healthy. Two things I always think that should be compulsory for young people to, mm-hmm. to, to, to go towards is channel their energies in creativity and sports. Sports, yeah. I think I feel because I never did it myself. <laughs> and I feel like I'm really lazy because of that. Uh, but I think sports, Sports also helps you connect in a different way uh, mm-hmm. with the outside world. And, 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 and uh, creativity sort of helps you connect with your own self really in a really amazing way. When you watch like the highest form of um, sports, it's like dance or it's like, yes. yeah. So it's very much like art in a lot of ways right? too. It's just yeah. physical. And it's, exactly. but, and it's also recognizing that we're animal. Yes, exactly. Mm-hmm. I think it's it, I think it's amazing how both these things are so important. Yeah, oh. I, I agree. Let's break down one of your pieces. Which one would you like to talk about? So the one I keep going back to for some reason is Baby Conundrum. Yeah. Yeah. Um, mainly because I think uh, now that I can think about things a little more clearly, that now that I'm getting a little more sleep, <laughs> uh, I keep looking at that painting and I find it. Um, I just find it really amazing how I looked at motherhood mm-hmm. before I had Marzia. This was the time I was thinking about it a lot. I, I am one of those people who always wanted to have kids. Mm-hmm. But then uh, once it actually became a reality, I started thinking about it uh, more seriously because um, I, I'd seen my friends have kids and I knew how tough it was. And, and I love my work so much. I was worried I wouldn't be able to work if I had a kid. So, so with this piece, when I look at it, um, I just find it funny the way I've sort of um, illustrated the, the children and the babies in it or, mm-hmm. or represented the babies in it. Um, I don't think now I'd ever represent them like that. There's like a, an image in the, in the painting of that I'm really fond of uh, where the baby sort of make, made out of a mountain and sky. Mm-hmm. Like the, the baby silhouette is the mountain and sky. And it's sort of like that, you know, there's this lightness where this baby is sitting on the mom or the grandma's shoulder. And there's a lightness do that image, but there's also there's this you, you when you look closely there's this mountain peak in there, so there's this heaviness as well. So there's there's both like you know she drives me nuts, um, and then she makes me laugh the next minute. So there's always this uh, crazy roller coaster that you're sitting on uh, mm-hmm. with with I think motherhood, um, and I just find it fascinating that I was able to pick certain things and mm-hmm. represent them so well before I had one because I didn't. I didn't know what, what it was going to be like. So I often go back and read this painting and, uh, and you know, certain things, obviously, I was very unsure about, which are more ambiguous. Um, they're hidden in layers. Um, and then certain things are very crisp and clear because I'm very clear on how, I'm, how I imagine it to be. Whenever I see the kind of, um, when I, in, in artwork, the kind of complex nature of motherhood, I, I'm always very appreciative of it because it is complicated. It is complicated, exactly. So what advice do you have for your younger self um, about art making and being an artist that you wish you had known? Um, can you go back and just give your younger self that, that beautiful piece of advice that you needed to hear? What would it be? I would tell myself to do exactly what I want to do when it comes to painting. Um, I love painting and drawing. I've loved it from, um, I don't even remember. I must have been three or four when, when I started drawing and painting. And I've always loved it. So I would tell myself to do exactly what I want to do and not think about, um, not even think about what my um, uh, college professors were sort of, nudging me towards not think about museums not think about art books not think about art galleries or what people will buy just do exactly what I enjoy doing with the paint and the paper or the canvas Um, the sizes not listen to the teachers although I do feel and when I think about it I do feel in retrospect that all of that helps you know where you're sort of hesitant where you where you do listen to your teachers and you do listen to the outside noise uh, and you do make those mistakes with, with that input, uh, you learn a lot from it. 
I mean, often I think when, when we're learning and pushing our own skill, um, there is an intuitive knowledge and you have to start where you are. That's where you'll learn from. If you yes. start where you are, it's like, oh yeah, okay, like I'm doing this thing and my skills are low, but that's where I am. So deal with it, right? And yeah. then move, yeah. move, move on. I'll move on. Um, but, I, but I think, um, yeah, I think it's very easy to get distracted by what others want you to do. And yes. uh, yeah, I don't know. It's interesting that you say that because you have such a, you, you do have a clear voice, much clearer than many people. And so um, uh, even you, or like, listen to yourself more. When you're yeah. young, you, you don't understand. You don't uh, understand how important it is to be you, <laughs> to be completely and entirely you. That is what I think, uh, I think that is what the, what the solution to this whole thing is. Everything's been done, but you have never been done. So do you. <laughs> That's how you'll win the race. <laughs> that was like the perfect like two sentences. Okay. I think that's what we're going to, that was for, like, thank you. That's amazing. We should make t-shirts. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Good for you. <laughs> okay. So that's great. Um, Do you have an art prompt for us? Can you give us a short creative assignment that will get us, you know, exploring maybe in the way that you do? Yes. So I would, uh, I would do this. The, the, the way I create my larger pieces uh, uh, sometimes is with those studies. I just love doing those. So I would suggest that everyone gets seven to 10 pieces of paper, small though, Mm -hmm. and um, draws, paints, uh, does collage work on all of those. Uh, thinking about what, thinking about whatever is swimming in their heads at the moment. It could be politics, it could be their, their kids, it could be um, uh, the weather, anything. The, 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 um, the season we're going through, anything. Or the, the things they see around their house. So, mm -hmm. you know, um, a lamp or a vase. Yeah, it could be or, objects or it could be could a little be bit objects, more ethereal. It could be, yes, anything. And then put them all together on, on the floor or on your table and then move them around to see how it could become one whole composition. Mm -hmm. And then on a larger surface, it could be, you know, a 30 by 20 sized uh, a drawing sheet or whatever draw the whole thing out and do it in one medium whichever whichever medium they choose uh, to create one whole uh, picture with all those little things that they've created it's a lot of fun it's just fun to also convert the different mediums that you've used into that one particular medium Should, do you want to suggest some mediums uh, so i would suggest watercolor for sure uh, it's a lot of fun to play with any kind of watercolor you could pick up a um, uh, you could pick up some watercolor from uh, a dollar store even. Um, acrylics, you could do inks, you could do um, color pencil on paper. Color pencil on paper is a lot of fun as well. Um, just um, pen and ink, which would be black ink. Um, and then converting that would be fun. Um, and collage. Collage is just, I don't know, it, it, I feel like collage opens up a lot of uh, blockages I don't know mm -hmm. because it it gives you a lot to work with well you could, because you have to disrupt what you were doing and then you exactly. get to like put it together again yes and then you'll and automatically you will see it in a different way yeah so you yeah. could do collage with your own photographs with your own drawings with your with any kind of newspaper clippings or mm -hmm. magazine clippings you have lying around so collage is a lot of fun that way and then mm -hmm. converting collage to pen and ink or paint or whatever watercolor that you choose in the end for the larger surface mm -hmm. is a lot of fun as well i think we should also maybe add like that you have to use some type of silhouette because i feel like you use silhouettes a lot i do yeah i love silhouette yeah so either you can silhouette and fill or yeah silhouette yeah. with negative space a hundred percent is that okay yes yeah i love that give us like the online and upcoming shows so um, online, you'll find me at, uh, my, on my website, which is www.sara-khan.com. And then you'll find me 
um, on Instagram at mindforking. And uh, we do have a show. We have a motherhood themed show coming up. Um, three of us artists in Vancouver are um, going to be working towards that. Um, that's coming up in uh, March next year. Yeah, it was such a such a treat to to uh, meet you and talk to you about your beautiful work. And I just can't wait to see what you're going to continue to make in the world. So thank you for the art prompt. I think it's a fabulous prompt, and I myself will do it. And uh, we'll hopefully talk to you again soon. Oh my God, thank you so much. It's just, uh, it's been uh, so much fun. Um, I just love talking about art anyway and work. I love discussing it. So it's been amazing. And I loved your questions, very, uh, very thoughtful.